Hi, this is a short version of a talk I gave at an EAG workshop in Copenhagen in June 2012. Um, the workshop was on open source EMP software, and uh, that's mostly geophysical software. Uh, the uh, audience was mostly geophysical developers from academia and, and industry. Um, talking about open source mobile software, open source is a kind of a philosophy for Agile, a blog, a wiki, uh, we just did a book on geophysics and um, and the software that we do is all permissively licensed under Creative Commons terms or for the software um, BSD style licenses. And why mobile? Well, we think mobile is um, it's fun to use, it's everywhere, the devices are inexpensive, um, you know, it's a lightweight platform but massively powerful with beautiful screens and um, they're just fun to share, a bit social and so on. Some people feel like, you know, there are some disadvantages with some of that, that it's frivolous and, you know, cheap and uh, really the platform's meant for games. But when you look inside these things, they're so powerful now. Um, you know, packed into this 82 cubic centimetres, that's 24 times smaller than my laptop. There's all sorts of goodies, uh, quad core, 1.4 gigahertz processor with a gig of RAM, lots of storage, loads of different um, sensors, accelerometer, gyroscope and so on. The, even the cameras are sensitive to infrared light like most digital cameras. You know, so they do have sort of superhuman uh, capabilities and of course the compute is superhuman as well. This is a little graph showing how supercomputers have improved over time from 1940 to 2010 measuring performance here in floating point operations per second. And that's, so that's the blue line in supercomputers. The green things are Intel CPUs, so the sorts of things you find in laptops. Um, the Core i7 is you know, a pretty new processor. And you can see how those have improved over time. And then marching right behind them are the mobile devices. So these are all Apple chips here. But you can see how with the iPad 3, we're basically you know, we've got the performance of a sort of late 1980s supercomputer and an Intel Xeon chip. Um, so really we can start thinking about doing serious science on these things and when you see um, the video capabilities with the, the graphics that these chips can handle, um, you should check out the demo online, there's like a, a, you'll find a video for this VJ software on iPad and it really is incredible what you can do, um, in, in this case merging two uh, pieces of video with sound. Um, so the chips are very capable. Now of course there's iOS and Android are the two sort of preeminent operating systems on mobile. Um, it, you know, Android it sort of accounts for a lot more devices, but the devices are quite, um, th there's a very large spread of uh, different manufacturers, different uh, physical devices, tablets, some with buttons like this, some with buttons buttons like that. Um, iOS is much more um, homogenous and in a lot of ways for developers that makes it easier to develop on. So hence quotes like this, Android delivers less gain and more pain than iOS. Um, developers are flocking to, to iOS hoping to build the next you know, um, Angry Birds or Instagram. Um, you know, 18,000 software development kit downloads in the first quarter of this year alone. Now we keep a list of mobile geoscience apps that we know about on subsurfwiki.org. Please check it out if you're interested in, in trying some pieces of software or um, if you know about any others, please add them. It is, you know, it's a wiki, you're welcome to, uh, to edit that page. Uh, here's a piece of sort of seismic oriented software that I know about on iOS. Um, you know, iPhone and iPad, it's called Pocket Size. It's 20 bucks. Um, I haven't actually tried it out. I think the price is a bit steep for the functionality, but I love seeing this stuff out there, so I hope there's uh, more to come. Here's one of our apps, it does volumetrics. You know, and you could say, well, you know, I can do that in my head. Well, maybe not in your head, but I can remember that, um, that equation, no problem. I can just pull out my calculator and, and you know, I don't need an app to do something like that. And, you know, fair enough, but what we like to think is we can actually tuck some expert opinion and judgment and things like lookup tables and cheat sheets into the app, hopefully, you know, as seamlessly as possible so they don't kind of get in the way. 
but when you can't remember what ge geometric factor is or how it works, or you can't remember the equation for B sub G in a gas prospect, um, the app can come to the rescue. You'll see in that little orange box on the screenshot there, um, we're also able to pull in things from the cloud. right? So that's the oil price coming in from Yahoo Finance. And um, that saves you having to go go look that up because it's um, you know up to the minute accurate data. And we can pull all sorts of things from the cloud along with data like that. We can pull in YouTube videos for tutorials, online help from the wiki. We can pass data back and forth with other apps. We can store things on the phone in a database. Um, we can use the email. We, you know, if it was relevant or useful, we could access the camera, uh, the GPS in the phone. Um, it's a very rich environment for developers and potentially, you know, hopefully for users too. Here's another of our apps, AVO, takes some rock properties and it makes, um, it does a plot of the reflectivity with offset. Um, it's a pretty simple little app, but drawing the graph was tricky for us. We didn't know how to do that. And it turned out that we actually didn't need to do it um, because Google have this API or application programming interface for drawing graphs. So actually all we had to do was build this pretty horrific looking URL, which basically just contains a lot of parameters for the for the graph we want, you know, axes, colors, and so forth, and actually includes the functions that we want to plot. In this case, the Shuey equation and Aki Richards equations. And um, in this case, with the blue line is without, um, sorry, with brine, and the red line is with gas. And I highlighted one of the Aki Richards equations there in red, so that you can sort of pick out wh where that is in the URL. And you know, it may look a bit clunky, but actually building text uh, like this in the app is, is quite easy. And we thought, well, wouldn't it be awesome if we could do the same thing but get Seismic in? So earlier this year, I sat down with a developer from Nthought, the uh, uh, Python programmers from Austin, Texas, and we built a web API for um, seismic models, in this case a, a little wedge model. We can also do offset synthetics. And again, all we're doing is building a URL, so we're passing in a bunch of parameters just in plain text um, to the app, uh, you know, which is on the web, so it's on a server on the web, and it passes back a little plot. And we've also built a little interface for it. I'm not going to make any claims that this is a great user interface or anything. It was really just a proof of concept, but um, it may make it a little easier to explore the API. You can put numbers into boxes here and have pull-down menus and so on. And as you can see in the middle there, it builds the URL and then uh, pulls in the plot. So what's the architecture like? Well, in the middle there is the browser view. That's what the user would see. Um, on the top right there, that's the bit, um, it's this uh, Google app engine. Now, what that's doing is building the interface, building that little form to fill out, and then making a URL and, um, and putting up the plot in the browser there. Google App Engine is fantastic, handles user logins, persistence of data, you get a little database, it's completely free, it's totally scalable, and very easy to use through the App Engine launcher that you see on the right there. But that's not actually doing the work. The Python program that we built that builds these little plots, it passes the URL and makes a little plot. Um, that's sitting on an Amazon EC2 server, which is basically just a Linux box on the web sits in West Virginia somewhere and uh, you get access to it through an SSL terminal which you can see on the left there and um, and it's running the software and doing the actual uh, serving of these images. Now the cool thing about it being a Linux box is we can potentially load Madagascar on there, we could be doing um, you know, right now we're just doing convolutional model, but there's no reason why we couldn't add finite difference, we could add ray tracing, we could do state of the art stuff on that platform. SegWiPy, you can read SegWi files, you know, maybe we could put up some uh, public models there so that you can explore those through the web API. All this stuff's on GitHub, github.com slash agile dash geoscience. So agile dash geoscience is you'll find um, our uh, mobile apps you can play with, you can download them, they're open source. You'll need to do that in App Inventor. Uh, MIT App Inventor is the platform we use for developing that stuff. Um, so they're not sort of pure Java or anything. And, uh, and then this modeler tool, which is the web API for gathers and wedge models and so on.
welcome to go and explore that. Uh, if you're a developer, please get in touch. And you know, if you fancy contributing, I'd love to talk to you about um, you know things we could do in there. Uh, we definitely need help. <laughs> um, so in summary, you know, openness is a thing that we do agile we get a kick out of it we enjoy it we think it's good for our company we think it's good for the community um, we love mobile because it's everywhere it's easy to use it's accessible and you know we want to help put some expertise in people's pockets uh, for those times in meetings and so on when you just need a quick answer um, we think they're absolutely powerful enough for science now and the web is a big part of providing some of that power you know through things like web apis which we'd like to keep as open as possible to help us and others be platform independent. You know, you can access a web API pretty much from anywhere, from any kind of app, uh, whether it's on a desktop, laptop, mobile interface, it doesn't matter. Um, so they help you be adaptable that way. And the openness, I think, can help us build something together as a community. So we're really looking forward to seeing if we can pull that off or not. Um, and either way, we'll learn something. Um, I hope you've learned something a little bit maybe um, go check out that list of apps give some of them a spin or if you're a developer and you fancy having a chat about what we can do with web APIs then please give us a shout we'd love to talk to you um, that's it thanks so much for listening and have a good one bye